Welcome to our webinar series, the first of three, starting today, on maximizing Microsoft Excel for HIM professionals, improving data quality and accuracy. This is Ellen Shakespeare. I am the Academic Director of the HIM program here at the CUNY School of Professional Studies. i uh, got my contact information up here just in case anybody would like to reach out to me. Um, we started our program here uh, last year. A little bit about our BS and HIM program. Um, the program includes, uh, we studied the disciplines of medicine, law, information, information technology, and management. We're preparing students to take the RHIA exam. Right now we are in candidacy with KHIM, which is the Commission on Accreditation of Health Information and Informatics Management programs. We are a fully online program, which means that you do not need to come to campus. And one good thing about the program is that we have uh, no out-of-state tuition for our online programs here at the CUNY School of Professional Studies. Everybody pays the in-state rates. We have very experienced faculty in online education and in HIM. And here's the link for our BS and HIM program. Just wanted to mention real quickly, too, about our, our Master's of Science in Data Analytics. It's a new program. We started here just this past fall. It focuses on quantitative methods, computation, a little bit about basic stats, probability, a little calculus, linear algebra, et cetera. Again, this is a fully online program, and there is no out-of-state tuition. And here's the, um, the website link for that particular program. And now, now that the commercials are done, I'm going to introduce your instructor for this three-part webinar series. Um, Mike Guerra is a partner with healthcarepctraining.com, and he has worked in the healthcare industry for over 30 years and is very familiar with the challenges facing folks in the HIM profession. So now I'm going to have Mike take, um, Mike take over the mic. Thank you very much, Ellen. It's a pleasure to be with all of you this afternoon. This afternoon in, in New York. I imagine there are people who are in other places, but it's a pleasure to be with all of you. And I want to welcome you to uh, th this course. Um, I'm excited about what we're doing here. I'm excited about the opportunity to uh, participate in this seminar on this webinar on Microsoft Excel. And I'm, we're going to spend today our, focusing on issues of data quality. We're going to be talking specifically about how you can make Microsoft Excel a more useful and productive tool in the HIM environment. Now, I would imagine that most of you, like I, have been using Microsoft Excel for many years. And if you're like the typical user, and even if you haven't, uh, th that doesn't matter. You'll, you'll, you're among friends today. We'll, uh, you, I think you'll be able to keep up with any, everything that we do. If you are like me, your, your typical uses of Microsoft Excel Excel usually start with things like sorting information, creating basic charts and graphs, creating lists of patients, providers, employees. We are all very familiar with the, these aspects of Excel, which really give us so much productivity and help us to do our jobs. We all know that Excel is good at, at the quick formula and calculations. In fact, it can do more than quick formulas. Uh, we'll be talking about those in another session. It can do very complex formulas. Um, but certainly most of us are familiar with the average function, the sum function, many of those functions that I think most of you uh, work with on a daily basis. Tracking people and events is a tool that some of you are probably familiar with using Microsoft Excel, although maybe not as many people do that as, as sorting and charts and graphs. But I think m many of you use it for tracking. And there's always the dreaded departmental budget. Yes, that actual versus expected that for those of you that work in hospital environments that, that get those reports from the finance office. And we're all forced to use Excel for those. So these, along many, as well as doing ad hoc data analysis of admissions, reviews, and so forth, all of these things and many other uses are the typical things that, that we find ourselves in HIM departments and, and virtually every other department in hospitals working with all the time. All of these tools, all of these functions are very helpful and they're very useful. But 
And that's a big but. There's one, one thing that I want to draw your attention to. There is a technique. There are actually many techniques in Microsoft Excel that, that people typically ignore for whatever reason. Maybe nobody's showed them how to do it, or maybe they've had results that, necessar that, that aren't necessarily the best. And one of the most underutilized tools in using Microsoft Excel is the data validation tool. And we're going to be spending the bulk of today working with the data validation commands. As I said, one of the most underutilized features in Excel. This is one of the features of Excel that can substantially reduce data entry errors. It's been said about Excel that the wonderful thing is you can put anything in any place. And one of the worst things about Excel is that you can put anything in any place. And that really is true. And so what data validation does for us is it enables us to reduce the data entry errors that, that users typically make. And it allows us to be able to catch those errors and to do that first level of quality control when we're analyzing data. It certainly is useful for improving internal data validity, making sure that everything ties together. And it per permits you to synchronize your data with master files, be that a doctor master, an insurance master, a room and bed master. There are many different master files. Those of you that work with uh, large databases uh, are, are familiar with the, the, the dreaded master files. And, and data validation is a technique which you are able to use to make sure that whatever data that you're working with is perfectly synchronized with the data that is contained in those master files that you find in your health information systems. There are many reasons for using data validation, and I hope to go into many of those and give you hands-on examples today on how to do that. Uh, during the course of our time together today, you may have questions. I'm sure there will be questions. Uh, there will be a little bit of time at the end of the seminar to address some of them, and my colleagues here will be helping me to address any questions that come in. You're also invited to send to me any questions uh, that, that you would like that we aren't able to get to. What I will do is group those questions together and respond to all of them over the next several days. Um, I'll give you, I'll repeat my contact information later, uh, but my email address is mgera, M-G-E-R-A, at healthcarepctraining.com. So let's begin talking about data validation. Well, we all know the situation where we, find, we have a list. Any list will do. It might look like what you're seeing here. And you notice that I, I've got, in addition to my patient's last name, first name, date of birth, and their age, and, and everything else, I've got my, uh, in column J, I've got my surgeon listed. And notice what's happened here. And I've, I've highlighted one surgeon in particular, Dr. Alan Forrest. Well, lo and behold, because the, this person was not using data validation, we've got Dr. Forrest in there as Forrest, Allen, Forrest, Allen, MD, Forrest, comma, A, Forrest, Allen, and so on and so forth. If I were, if somebody were to ask me how many procedures did Dr. Allen, did Dr. Forrest have during this time period, I would be hard pressed to tell them because I've got five different identities for Dr. Allen. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this type of, uh, of a scenario. What I'm showing you here is an example of a spreadsheet where we have not applied the principles of da data validation. If we had, we would only have one identity for each doctor, and that would make a whole lot more sense. So you take a look at what we've got here. We can come back to it in a few minutes. But I want you to understand that the purpose of data validation is to make sure that we don't get exactly what you're seeing in front of us right now. Well, there are many different data validation techniques, and we're going to go into all of them today. Um, and as we go through these data validation techniques, what I think would probably be best, rather than trying to write down every command, we'll be set, we can send to you all of the examples that, that are out there. In fact, I believe most of you have already received the, um, the spreadsheet, and those examples are, are buried right in there. You'll, we'll be going through each one of them very carefully. Well, I've already said the data validation allows you to synchronize with master table lists. We'll be able to reconcile and validate both whole numbers and decimal places, particularly useful if you're putting in heights and weights and so forth. We'll be able to validate against logical values. Now, I'll try not to use too many programming terms, but I think most of us are aware of the, the, the principle of logical values. Sometimes they're written yes, no. Sometimes they're written true, false. I think you'll be able to follow how Excel validates against 
logical values, we'll be able to use dates. We'll be able to validate using dates, and we'll be able to validate dates both with and without formulas, which is really quite exciting, and we'll be able to use data validation with time. One of the more useful techniques in the HIM world is the, the whole data validation of text length. Let's suppose you have a medical record number that is seven characters long, and, you, and every medical record number must be seven characters long. But if somebody puts in a, six, uh, a medical record number of six characters, you want to catch that error. And so there is a, a technique for debt validating against text length and a whole host of custom validation settings. As we go through this, I think you'll be able to come up with many of the other validation settings and, and your own custom validation settings. You'll, you'll only really be limited by your own imagination. And I would appreciate hearing from any of you in terms of things that you come up with that I haven't thought of. So let's go right into it. Well, one of the things that validation enables you to do is to use what we call lookup tables. And, and what we mean by that is that a user will put in a particular value, let's say for example a CPT code, and then the value that they put in will then go look up, a, look up in a master table and grab the description that's associated with that CPT code. I'm going to show you how to do that and you'll have the opportunity to, to, to do that yourself on the spreadsheet that you were sent. And finally, each validation gives the user the ability to internally validate their own entry. And then if something doesn't validate correctly, they'll be able to go in and then work with that, hunt down that error. So much of HIM, as you all know, is hunting down, researching, finding where we're missing something, finding a missing code. Um, thank goodness most of us are pretty good at that and have that, that sense of, of wanting to, to dig and dig and, and not be satisfied with the answer. And, and Validation helps us to work with that and to be able to, to conduct those, those uh, quality control um, checks. What will be the result? Well, the result will be improved data quality for you and your colleagues at your organization or in your life. The user effort, really, once we set up data validation tables, I think you'll find that user, the user effort really is rather minimal and it allows you to think through some of the data validation issues associated with the data. So uh, a, a improved data quality result, a user effort that's minimal, and what do we say? Well, the value is priceless. There you go. Well, let's get on to it. Well, using logical formulas to trend clinical data will be one of the other topics that we'll be talking about. Or, who wants to become a computer programmer? Now, I know that most of you did not wake up this morning saying, gee, I want to become a computer programmer today. And I'm not going to make you into a computer programmer, but what I am going to do is I'm going to challenge you to think in a very logical and a very structured way. And that is sort of the thinking mode that computer programmers have to use. You'll find that it will make you a better user of data as we go through these exercises.